and welcome to Rock Paper Scissors Tutorial Part 2. In this part I'm going to add a loop to the program that we made last time and so we can get our game to repeat more than once. So a quick shout out to my members, Kim Xiong joining our four month member team of Kevin and Paul. And we have quite a, quite a lot of movement over here. I think Hassan moved over to the paddles third month. I think King Monk moved up to the snake level. So thank you all for your support. And everybody also check out Old School Coder who has an excellent uh, YouTube channel as well. So yeah, thanks to everybody for supporting the channel. So let's take a look at what we've been doing. This is a Java tutorial. I'm normally a Python guy, as you know, but uh, I also teach Java and I'm teaching Java right now. And I'm actually going to be doing this lesson tomorrow with my students. And uh, yeah, so I thought this would be a great way for me to prepare and I thought I could share it with everyone. So let's go ahead and just review what we've got so far. So we've got Welcome to Rock, Paper, Scissors. And I choose, let's say I choose Rock, go figure. And you can kind of scroll off the screen, but we see the computer had a choice. And in this case, it was Paper and Paper beats Rock, which yeah, really does it. But anyway, that's the way the game works. And the program ends. So at this point, you know, I have to rerun the program and it just gets tiresome to do that. So what I want to do here is I'm going to do something called a for loop. And what I want to do with this is I'm going to decide how many times I want my program to repeat. So before we do that, let's take a look at a couple things here. Um, you can see here in the main method, this is where we create our variables. This is where we create our objects, or I should say instantiate our objects. It's probably a better way of putting it. So we've got a scanner, we've got a random object, and we've got some strings, and we've got an int. And then here we're printing the title of the game. So we have to, as a programmer, I have to think about which section do I want to my program to repeat. Now in Java, you only want to do this part one time. You only need to set those objects up. You only need to set up the, the variables so that there's a space in memory for them. And in my game, I don't want to reprint the welcome message every time because it just doesn't make sense. We know we're playing rock, paper, scissors, but I do want the player to choose rock, paper, scissors again and again. So I'm just gonna put a little comment here and like repeat this section. And keep in mind, what I wanna do is I need to repeat all of these things, okay? So it's not that, you know, I can't just, I can't repeat just a part of it. I have to do all these things. I have to have the computer make a choice. I have to convert that choice to an R, P, or S for our code. Then I have to figure out who is the winner. Okay. So, Basically, I'm going to find the start and end part of my code. So, you know, keep in mind that this is part of the section. Now, this little uh, brace matches with this brace. And again, I don't want to repeat this whole section here. I want to repeat from here. So I'm going to use the first type of loop. And again, I'm assuming you're somewhat familiar with Java and, and loops and, and things like that, either from Java or from other languages. So what I want to do is I'm going to go ahead and say, I want to play this game three times. So here's what I want to do. I'm going to say for int i equals zero, semicolon. And while i is less than three, we do i plus plus, we increment i. And so then I'm going to hit enter. And then what I need to do is I'm gonna indent this entire section that I wanna repeat. Now in Java, I don't absolutely have to do this, but it makes your code easier to read and to understand. And then don't forget the closing brace. So, that's, so let me just show that one more time. Notice how all this is now indented inside this for loop. Okay? And how this works, and again, if you don't know what a for loop is, you know, watch my for loop video. Um, it explains all these things. So, or my loop video. So what I'm doing is I'm saying i is zero and it is an integer. And then while i is less than three, so zero, one, two. So while i is less than three, do this, 
each time incrementing i by one. So i plus plus adds one to i. So now if I compile this, okay, compilation, uh, compilation finished successfully. I'm gonna go ahead and run it. Okay, so rock, paper, scissors, I'm gonna go ahead and choose rock. Okay, you say the computer chose rock, we've got a tie game. Okay, computer chose scissors, the user won. And rock and the computer won. Okay, so you can see how it is now repeating three times. So this assumes, of course, in advance that I know how many times I want to play. Now, there's not much point in repeating if we don't keep track of the wins. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go up to here. I'm going to make two new variables. I'm going to say int user wins. And of course, when the game starts, that's going to be zero. Player wins equals zero. I'm oh, sorry, I, using player is the same thing. I'm <laughs> sorry about that. Um, the computer wins. Okay. And what I want to do is when the player wins, when the user wins, add one. And when the computer wins, add one. So let's go ahead and do that. So you can see down here where we have our choices. The user won. So I'm going to say user wins plus plus. And that adds one to user wins. And fortunately, I have these all kind of set together, so it makes it a little bit easier. And then we have here where the computer won. So computer wins plus plus. So I'm just adding this. And again, if I'm going a little too fast, just pause it. Or you know, you can always play it at a slower speed, um, depending on how you like to do things. And so we add one to computer wins. And then what we'll do is we can do something like this. We can say, you know, print, sorry, system. I've been doing a lot of Python. System.out.println. And we'll say user wins, colon, quote, plus user wins. Not wins, wins. Plus, don't forget the space there. Computer wins. And quote, plus computer wins. Okay, so each time, notice this is actually inside the loop. Okay, note the indentation, note the location of this brace. So this will print out the number of wins each time. Let's go ahead and run that. Okay, computer chose scissors. The user, oops, you know what I forgot to do? I forgot to compile. So it was doing the old one. And I got an error. And of course I forgot the semicolon because I've been doing tons and tons of Python lately. Okay, so compile successfully. Let's go ahead and run it. And so we're going to have to run it one more time. So rock. Okay, the computer shows rock. We got a tie. User wins zero. I'm going to go ahead and try rock again. Ooh, the computer chose paper. The computer won. Computer wins one. Uh-oh. Let's go ahead and rock. And let's see here. And we got a tie. So you can see in this case, um, the computer won more than I did. So what we've decided, again, this particular version of the game, what we decided is that we're going to play it three times, and we're doing best of three. Actually, I'm going to go ahead and just add a little, um, I don't like the formatting of that. I'm really picky about that kind of thing. Put a little forward slash N here, just so we have a little bit of space between. So if I compile that and run it, so you can see there's a little space there, so I can hit rock. And now there's a little space here so that you can see that this is a this is a section, right? We can see a little bit better, you know, the parts of the program or the output of the program, I should say. Um, so yeah, so let's do rock, rock, rock. Oh, and the user won. Okay, and you see user wins one, computer wins zero. Now what I might do at this point is after the loop, determine the final winner. So what I might do is I might say if user wins is greater than computer wins system dot out dot print ln the user is the ultimate winner I can put congratulations or something on there um, now if that's not the case I can say else if else if Let's say user wins is less than computer wins. 
Uh, well, no, I'm just going to copy that because I don't feel like typing the whole thing again. And I'm going to say the computer is the ultimate winner. And then there's the third case is if it's none of these, then I would say system out. You know, the game is tr is tied. And that's that. So let's go ahead and test that. So again, I'm going to compile it. And it's compiled. We can run it. So I'm going to go ahead and hit rock. Okay, user one. Sweet. Rock. It's a tie and rock. And you can see here, computer wins, computer wins. The game is tied. So at this point, yeah, I could try again, etc., etc. Um, so that's really just kind of an easy way of repeating some code. And in this case, you know, taking a, a simple loop and applying it to, you know, rock, paper, and scissors. So just a couple things, just just to you know, refer back to this. It's good probably is probably good practice or maybe it'll help you especially if you're a beginner is to figure out which section you want to repeat and that's why I put these comments in here to make that a little bit uh, a little bit clearer okay um, and then just you know again you can highlight a section of code at least in genie most editors I think do this and if you hit tab it will indent the whole thing or shift tab to unindent the whole thing again Java you don't have to do that but it's it is a preferred way of doing things um, and then here I've got matching braces, so opening and closing. And then once I've completed my three, uh, I said my three you know, times through the loop, my three iterations, then I'm going to go ahead and determine the final winner, like that. So I could change. Let's say I want to do best out of five. I could change this to five, uh, but three is probably where we'll keep that. So yeah, so that's basically it. It's not uh, super complicated. And I hope that, again, I hope if you have some background in loops that this was fairly easy to follow. As I said, tomorrow I will be going over this with my students. So I hope they uh, enjoy this and I hope you enjoyed this. So yeah, thanks for watching. Um, yeah, uh, you know, if you can, click uh, join to below to join as a paid member. If you can't, subscribe, hit the bell, like, you know, comment, whatever. Um, I appreciate it all. So thanks everybody and have a fantastic uh, week. Take care.